Hello and welcome back to Overbooked. I'm Amanda and today we're going to be talking about the book Blood in the Water, The Attica Prison Uprising of 1971 and its Legacy by Heather Ann Thompson. I discovered Blood in the Water from Allison Reed Cece. She's a bookstagrammer. I will link her below. She's really fun. She reads a lot of cool um, nonfiction books, a lot of around social justice, and she posted about this book last year and she raved about it and I really really wanted to check it out and I haven't got around to it till today or not today I haven't got around to it till this year obviously so um it was something that I really wanted to check out and read and I'm really glad I did because it was really great. Blood in the Water is also a book that I use for the reading women challenge so I use this for prompt number 17 for a book that's over 500 pages this book is Goodreads says it's like 700, but half of those are just like the notes and sources that she uses. So I'm looking at it right now. It's about 571 pages of actual um, reading material. And then you can also use this, and I saw this actually on one of the reading women. I follow them on Instagram. They had a post, and you can actually use this one for prompt number seven prompt number six, and it's a nonfiction book by a woman historian. So Heather Ann Thompson is a historian. She's actually from Michigan, so that was kind of cool. And she wrote this nonfiction book. So you can also use it for either or. I know that a lot of people like to double up on prompts to get them done. And I like to nerd out and try to have a book for each prompt. So I might try to find another book, but if it gets down to the wire at the end of the year, we're in December, still haven't read a book for the prompt number seven. I'll throw her on there, you know? So Blood in the Water, first of all, was a an amazing book. I really, really enjoyed this. The writing was very in-depth, very informational. I felt like I learned a lot and it really took me through the story. Like I felt like I was reading a story and I love when that's how a nonfiction book is set up. So the Blood in the Water follows the story of the Attica prison and the riot that took place where the prisoners started a protest of the mistreatment that they have received for years and it's shocking to read and so eye-opening but also like this is what everyone's talking about when they say our criminal justice system sucks wow attica was this high security prison that was meant for people who committed high crimes very severe serious crimes but in the majority of people that were there were people who got transferred there um a lot of the stories we heard from were from young men who committed very petty crimes who you know broke their probation and just like really small things and they're sent to this like maximum prison and in this place they are not fed adequately they don't get nutritious food they don't get enough yard time, they don't get enough recreation, their cells are extremely small and they don't get like adequate like bedding or sleeping arrangements. Their visiting hours are little to none. They don't have a lot of resources. A lot of the systems and processes in place are just not, are pretty much set against the prisoner. Um, to receive parole, they have to secure a job, but they can't make any phone calls, so they can't secure a job, so their parole is taken away. There's a lot of things that happen, and the prisoners started this communication with the prison director, I don't remember his exact title, and they started this communication of um, expressing their grievances and wanting something to be resolved. And this was stretched out for a pretty long period of time before the riot actually ensues, and the prisoners get extremely frustrated because they're trying to have this communication with this um, director and he will respond that he's going to look into it um, and then he they don't hear anything from him. He'll visit the prison but he really won't answer any questions and so finally um, a protest erupts and the prisoners take over the guards and they hold camp in one of the yards at the prison. There they try to hold negotiations because they do have hostages and they are trying to get negotiations for the things that they were asking for originally um, in that communication with the director. And then of course they're asking for amnesty so they don't want to be charged for any crimes during this protest. So you think that something's gonna be worked out, but eventually the government 
so the governor of New York and the the director of the prison and the correction officers and the state police and the National Guard just cannot wait anymore and they don't want to wait anymore and so they take back the prison with extreme force and I would say extremely violent force. State police officers and National Guardsmen and correction officers all have guns where they are aware that the prisoners are unarmed and they forcefully take the prison over and it's this bloodbath and the amount of violence that was done unnecessarily was extreme and at times it's very very hard to read um, because it's so inhumane these prisoners were treated like dirt like animals like they deserved nothing and it was nuts to read these prisoners undergo this violent taking back of the prison and they're put back into their cells the ones who survive are treated to even more abuse more racial slurs um, verbal abuse and are sentenced to numerous crimes so heather ann thompson takes us through that day and then the following weeks that come after that and we get to see the court proceedings and essentially the states and like the national government's trying to cover up this instance because there were so many things that went wrong that they were already aware of that they were doing wrong one of the things that's blaring is when they were handing out guns before taking over the prison they didn't track who had what gun um serial numbers were taken off like it wasn't there was no no formal process was followed um which made it very difficult to follow up with um crimes committed against prisoners when trying to indict some of these correctional officers or police officers because um, there was no proof that they held the actual gun that, you know, wounded a prisoner or killed a prisoner or a hostage. A lot of hostages were killed in the gunfire. And again, the prisoners had no guns. So the only re way that they would be killed is through the guns that were held by the people taking over at the prison. So we get to see this whole aftermath of this retaking and the court proceedings that happen, how the state tries to react, the social justice that tries to come out of this event. And it almost just kind of continually disappoints you how the government reacts and how um, higher officials react. But um, it's just really eye-opening to see. And then there also are a lot of heartwarming people along the way that are doing their best to do the best that they can and do what's right. And that is kind of the book's or this event in history's saving grace. Um, I would say that this was a really incredible book and I think that if you are you are interested in nonfiction, if you like learning about interesting historical events that don't really get talked about in our history class, I think that this book is really great and a really great read. Um, obviously we all have a lot of time right now and you can definitely take your time and really pour through it. I know I needed to take a couple breaks while reading it, um, but I, really loved this book and I would give it five stars for sure. Um, if you haven't already, I suggest checking out Blood in the Water by Heather Ann Thompson and it's a great choice to read for either the number six or whatever other number the other prompt was for the Reading Women Challenge, a book over 500 pages or a book written by a woman historian. Check it out. Uh, if you have, let me know what you thought. Um, let me know what you're reading right now. I would love to hear. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time.